What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Factory, the series where we try to make the most complicated possible factory in Space Engineers, where the whole goal is to make everything look cool. That's the whole idea with this series. And uh, last episode we built this really cool gravity-fed refining system uh, that doesn't really use any conveyors. It uses gravity in these weird little pivots that you can see in the background uh, to move materials into their respective refineries. Uh, in this episode we're going to be using the output from those refineries to do some assembling. That's the whole idea, is to try and get some sort of assembler up and running. Specifically we're going to be working on iron. And more specifically, uh, this whole episode we're going to be trying to make a conveyor. That's one of the things, now I, I did say we're not allowed to use conveyors in this series, but what I meant was the Space Engineers conveyors. We're going to be trying to make a manual, a physical conveyor that uses machinery rather than uh, rather than the magic of Space Engineers blocks of teleporting things from point A to point B. Um, so without further ado, here's our con conveyor attempt. Uh, I, will, I will warn you, um, things get a bit hairy every once in a while. Uh, with this thing but a lot of you guys commented that you wanted to see it so well i just had to try and actually get a design to, that works with a conveyor um, so the idea here is we want to get our iron from this this weird little slide that's coming out of the iron thing to this conveyor which is going to raise it up and bring it to the right so it's gonna it's gonna kind of fall down fall down over here to the left piece which you saw well i guess you see on the left and then it's going to go up the conveyor to the right where there's going to be the assemblers that are going to take iron um, so uh, with this first design that we're going to use, I actually used the design by LSG from a video that's like six years old or something. Uh, and essentially what it uses is like, um, it uses uh, rotors because obviously six years old. Um, so it uses like this alternating rotor system in which you have rotors on the left and rotors on the right. And together it sort of forms this, um, uh, I wanna say flexible line, which is exactly what we want with a conveyor. Um, all, all the blocks in Space Engineers are sort of rivet or rigid, uh, or, or they're they're like they're like very they're blocky. You know, they don't move, they don't flex or anything. But when you use rotors in this way, you can actually make it kind of flexible a little bit. I'm sure some of you guys have messed with this thing before, but this is my first time trying to do something like this. Well, I should say this is my first time, almost success. I've tried it before in the past to disastrous results, and uh, yeah. Um, but anyways, in LSG's video, he does this thing where he has these conveyors, and what he has to do is he has to wrap uh, the conveyor piece around the back side of the conveyor. And uh, he uses a ship to do this. And I tried the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work out for me very well. I don't know, he, he made it look so easy. He just had like a ship with landing gears, he grabbed the end of it, and sort of like maneuvered it around the other piece of the conveyor. He sort of wrapped it around very nicely, very gracefully. But uh, but of course, when I try it, um, we get things like this. <laughs> Attempt number two incoming. There we go. There it goes. You know, that wasn't that bad. I recovered. That's a good recovery. Definitely points for recovery. But of course, I would not be deterred for a third attempt. Well, maybe a fourth attempt, actually. There it is. There it is. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Clang decided he would show up on this day and, and ruined, ruined my attempted conveyor. Like I said, LSG makes it look so easy. Six years ago though. You know, the game has changed a lot. Um, he was doing it in space. I'm doing it on a planet. So, you know, maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, I don't know. But So defeated by Clang, I looked to my Discord and I asked if anyone had any designs or if anyone had any experience with conveyors, I should say. And it turns out that one of the users actually did. In fact, he made a whole design uh, for me and, and he, he showcased it and he made it in his world to make sure it worked. Uh, and this user was our, our hero named T14D3. He made this design that used, uh, that used, instead of using rotors, it used hinges, which in hindsight seems obvious to use actually. But the design he showed me was this sort of elegant mix between hinges and blast door blocks. And it looked really cool and I, I really wanted to make it so here we are with design number two. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to build the, the sort of backbone of the conveyor, which is the, the blocks and the hinges, uh, and then we'll fill in the conveyor later. And that, that's to make it a lot easier to, uh, to, to, to build. It just makes it a whole lot easier. Um, so in order to do this, it requires a lot of, uh, a lot of messing with these, these, uh, these joints, I should say. That, that's kind of what hinges are, isn't it? They're, they're joints. Um, because one joint can only support so much gravity as you can see right here it's kind of like 
falling over a little bit. So uh, the way we actually get by this is we we um, we raise a hinge up, we build a couple more hinges attached to it, kind of, and then we lock them. So before gravity can affect it, before it gets too heavy, we lock the hinges so that they can go they can go further. And I should point out that it's around this time that I decided it would be a good idea to use Build Vision 2.0. Uh, I actually saw this in a mod review by uh, by Splitzy. Uh, showcasing some of the mods that he used and he showed off how this one works and it makes life so much easier so if you're not using build vision 2.0 and you're trying to do something like this i highly recommend using it uh, because before this i was essentially going to like a, a control panel to move all these hinges and i had to have like the hinge names memorized and everything so i knew which one i was moving and it was it was a pain in the butt and, uh, and, 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 well, I couldn't pretty much see what I was doing at the time, but with build vision, you can sort of go up to like a hinge and say, all right, you, I want you to move, or I want you to lock, or I want you to do this sort of thing. And, and it just works, TM. Uh, <laughs> so build vision 2.0 is a lifesaver. Now what you saw there that I just kind of spoke through, uh, that was me attempting to, well, attempting successfully, I should say, um, not to toot my own horn, but to, uh, I was attempting to use gravity to kind of pull the line more taut because one of the things that T14D3 told me about his design or the design that he used and showed me is that, uh, it, it does decrease your sim speed, um, the more, uh, slack it has. So you want to make it have as little slack as possible and that will help your sim speed. Uh, so what we we're doing was we we're making everything flexible, releasing all the locks and using gravity to pull it. Uh, as taut as possible and then we locked it with a landing gear up top finally we've done the bottom part of the conveyor and we, we're, we're, we're attempting to do the final boss we're about to do the final boss of the conveyor the final boss of a conveyor is wrapping it around and reattaching it and this requires um well it's it's very tough uh, because what you have to do is you have to essentially have a hinge part on one of the sides and you have to have a hinge base i guess on the other side and you have to kind of make them meet ever so ever so slightly so that finally you can say attach and then that that will complete the circuit that is the final boss and it's it's a it's a it's much tougher than i thought it would be um we actually end up using these vehicles to try and pull everything tight uh because of course we can't use gravity on this side because it's really low so we use vehicles to pull everything and landing gears to lock it in place and i think that really looks cool trying to use vehicles to to move everything around um so so uh yeah, we're attempting to connect it. We're going to end up using a second vehicle in a second here to uh, to try and push it. Because they have to line up. They not only have to line up lengthwise, I guess, but they have to line up on on the other axis as well. The, the pushing axis, the pushing pulling axis. Um, okay, that sounds very confusing, but essentially you have to have it long enough to attach to the hinge. And you also have to push it so that they're in line, I guess you could say. You have to line them up. So we finally end up attaching this thing, getting it working. And, well... Uh, it went about as well as you could probably expect. You can see the, you can see that Clang might be possessing this a little bit. <laughs> and as soon as we uh, we go ahead and disconnect the lock to the ground, well, ouch! There goes there goes our conveyor. You can see my character. He's torn. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. But luckily, of course, we had a backup because you should always have backups, folks. If that's one thing you learned from this video, it's that backups are important. At least having one backup that's like five minutes old will save your life. It'll save, well, it'll save your time, I should say. Um, so we try the same thing. We end up attaching it. And you can see Clang decides to possess it once again. But to this day, Clang does not uh, succeed. Clang goes home in defeat. That's a really confusing way of saying that it worked. <laughs> So here's our conveyor. Well, here's the backbone of our conveyor, I should say. It's not fully complete. In fact, you can see that it kind of slacks a way too much. Um, the top part is actually touching the bottom, which is not ideal. So we do go around and mess with it a little bit more, trying to pull everything. We use a bunch of other crazy contraptions, vehicles with counterweights to try and pull everything taut again. Um, of course, this time we're not actually messing with the hinges near the wheel, which is the part with the most tension. We're actually messing with the hinges in the center uh, so that so that we don't well, it, it makes it a lot easier to, to mess with the hinges in the center than to mess with them around the wheel because we don't have to worry about, like, lining everything up um, around a wheel, I guess you could say. So, more crazy contraptions, uh, trying to push everything with, with, uh, with vehicles, which, again, I think just looks really cool. The idea that we're trying to make, like, a visual factory that you can see every part moving, and then in order to construct it, it requires, like, actual physical vehicles. It just seems really cool to me. So, I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, finally, we have a, a conveyor that I'm sort of proud of. 
it's still touching a little bit, but I think I think I, I skip a little bit of this and, uh, and 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 we end up making it look a little bit better. Um, it's not touching anymore. Um, so yeah, I, th I think the conveyor is pretty nice. It um, well, that's just the backbone. We actually add a little bit more to the conveyor um, because it's got to be a little wider. Because remember, the conveyor has a purpose. It's supposed to carry things. So we we add this back or we add the rest of the conveyor to it. Um, and we're, we're adding that in yellow so you can actually see the backbone versus the uh, the actual conveyor parts. And I think it looks pretty cool, the yellow and the in the gray mixture. It's a good color combination. Um, but yeah, there we go, messing with the conveyor. Uh, you can even see it in action a little bit here. In fact, you can see it, I guess you can see it failing to be in action. Uh, we have to push it over a little bit, we have to make it even a little bit wider uh, to get it to actually work properly. But, um, but once we get it working properly, you know, it, it works fine. It's a little bit jiggly, but um, it's uh, well. Okay, it jumps a lot. That's that that that's the that's the end result. And I, I think, in fact, I think the reason that it jumps so much is because of how large the actual pieces are. Um, the individual conveyor pieces are too large for the wheels that we've used. If a we made smaller pieces, or b we used larger wheels, uh, that could solve the problem. But you know, this is what we went with. It's it's my first conveyor, guys, and uh, it actually works pretty well. I think. Um, we're going ahead to add the other pieces there, um, and, uh, and and this should finish up the conveyor segment. I should note, by the way, that it does actually lower sim speed a little bit when it's under heavy load or when it's jiggling a bit too much, but uh, it's not terrible. It's not a terrible loss of sim speed. It's it's manageable, and um, yeah, it's, it's manageable, I guess. Um, of course, if we build too many things like this, it will probably cause a, some problems. So in the future, I might like change this up a little bit. I might try to, well, I might try to remake it with smaller pieces or something. I don't know. Um, but anyways, right here, the final part of the uh, of the conveyor that we're adding is the lip that will hold the uh, the iron from going backwards. Uh, because once the iron is put onto this conveyor belt, the conveyor belt's attempt is to push it forward and up, but gravity as well as momentum is going to make the iron want to essentially stay where it is uh, and move backwards. So uh, when we add this little lip, it, it, it's what helps the iron get pulled along the conveyor um, and it works pretty well. In fact, I think the conveyor looks really good from this angle, <laughs> if, I, if I should say so myself. So the next part of this video, we built the conveyor. The conveyor is all well and done. Now we're going to try to build some sort of system to drop the iron onto the conveyor. And it's actually not as easy as I thought it would be. Honestly, I thought we could just like kind of, kind of uh, direct the iron into the, the belt and it would be like, all right, yeah, I'll go there, it's fine. But guys, this is Space Engineers, and the game is not always going to work how you think it's going to work. So there are two parts to this. Um, I should mention, by the way, I, I, have, I don't think I've mentioned this. Uh, the reason we have this weird little slide that you see sort of at the top of the screen is because, uh, and those weird little pegs that I was uh, that I removed, is because we were trying to, or we, we will, I guess, that's how the design's going to work. Uh, we're going to have some of the iron flow to the left uh, and some of the iron flow to the right at the bottom there, where, where it transfers to a different slide. The iron that's flowing to the left towards the conveyor belt is going to be the iron that is used for assemblers that require only iron to work. So uh, I've, I've, I've separated it into two parts. There's assemblers that only require iron, and there's assemblers that require iron and other stuff. So the only iron is going to go to the left, and the iron and other stuff is going to go to the right. Um, so uh, since since the little slide didn't work out, we're building this cool little, uh, this cool little dropping mechanism that's going to essentially... Well, essentially it's going to carry and drop the iron onto the belt because that seemed like the most obvious way to get this thing to work. Um, now there's a chance that this changes in the future, by the way, because while it does work pretty decently by uh, by dropping the iron onto the conveyor belt, it also, uh, some of the iron goes elsewhere. <laughs> like some of the iron does not go on the conveyor belt and just like drops off in a weird place. So um, in hindsight, this whole mechanism seems like it might be unnecessary and there might be a better way to do things. In fact, honestly, this whole slide idea uh, we might change that. So the way the iron gets to the conveyor belt might might completely change. Uh, maybe or maybe not. We'll see. Um, we'll see in the future. But for now, it works pretty well. So this is our this is our dropper. So we're we're gonna test out our dropper here. It works pretty well. Um, however, we do have to keep a hinge lock to keep it from dropping because of the weight of the iron. But we're gonna run another test here uh, for the actual dropping onto the conveyor belt. And uh, well, let's see it in action. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> it completely breaks the conveyor belt because of its weight. Um, so, 
Well, I guess the solution to that is turning off block damage. And so we do that. <laughs> Again, guys, backups are your friend. If you're trying to do anything like this, make sure you have backups turned on and have them kind of frequent, I guess. <laughs> uh, they saved me here. But um, but anyways, yeah, turning off block damage worked fine. And, uh, and yeah. So finally, for the last part of this episode, we would like to do something with the iron that we have conveyed. So we put the iron on the conveyor and it goes to this place. But what does it get? What, what happens to it once it gets to this place? That is the great question. Well, it gets assembled, of course. As I mentioned earlier in, in the uh, in the time lapse, the iron that is coming here is for assembling iron only items. Uh, now, what I mean by that is is uh, assembling items that only require iron and no other material. Uh, and there are a surprising amount of them, actually, in the game that only require iron. There's like steel plates, there's interior plates, there's small and large steel tubes, there's construction components, and uh, I'm sure there's a couple more even. There's like six to eight items that only require iron, and those are all going to be assembled here, ideally. So we needed some sort of system that would uh, sort of distribute the iron evenly, well, sort of evenly, amongst all of these assemblers um, to try and get them to them. Uh, and the system that I came up with is, well, it's it's a bit of a weird system, but it's, it's actually like a coin, it's like a coin pusher system. Uh, so if you guys have ever been to a casino or to like a... Uh, or to like an arcade, uh, I'm sure you're aware of those coin pushing things where like a coin gets dropped in and then there's like pushers that push it and it like goes with the other coins and they uh, they fall off the edge and if they fall off the edge you win and you make money or you uh, or you get tickets or something. That's how a coin pusher works and that's how I'm kind of designing this thing. So essentially the iron will drop onto the field I guess onto the little base area uh, and then this pusher will sort of push it toward the assemblers which are kind of uh kind of at the receiving end of the pusher so the iron will be pushed into the assemblers and the assemblers will do their assembling and more more iron will come and get pushed and in, into the assemblers and that's the whole idea and now you'll see our coin pusher in action um now this design might change in the future because it doesn't necessarily distribute evenly the iron uh pretty much the first two assemblers get a lot of iron and the next two get a little bit of iron, and the last two get almost no iron. But um, but anyways, if you guys have a better design for this, please let me know. Uh, a better way to distribute iron to, like, maybe six to eight assemblers um, is what I'm looking for. Uh, but for now, that actually, it, it works pretty well, you know? It, it doesn't work that badly, especially for the first two. Um, but yeah. So finally, with our coin pushing assembling out of the way, uh, we get a little sneak peek of what might happen in next episode. So we need some way to get the assembled items from point A to point B. So they get assembled here and they get, well, we can't really use normal conveyors to move everything around. So uh, we need some sort of system and we're kind of out of space in some of the area here. So we're using a car. Well, more like a truck, I guess like a transportation vehicle that will be autonomous and cool. So essentially the, the whole idea here is that the assemblers will, uh, will kind of push out their items onto this truck whereby the truck will take the items and then it'll drive away to wherever it needs to go. Uh, and then once it gets there, it will deposit the items uh, somehow, I guess. And, uh, and, and then the items will go on their way to wherever they need to be. Um, I think it'll be a pretty cool design. Uh, and we only do like a little placeholder for it with like a little non-autonomous car. But, um, but yeah. So if you guys have any ideas for how this should work, by the way, please let me know as well. Because while Space Engineers does have like an autonomous waypoint system, where things can sort of track to waypoints and, and follow them, I don't think that'll be precise enough. So initially I'm thinking some sort of maybe monorail system or some sort of railed guided car with sensors that'll stop it at point A and point B. Um, I have a couple of ideas, but if you guys have any ideas specifically for how to do this, um, please let me know. Um, so I just need some sort of loading thing right here and some sort of unloading thing at point B. Now, since this is a car, I guess we could also make ramps. It could probably drive upward, which uh, which would help out a lot, actually, since gravity uh, is very helpful in a project like this. But anyways, guys, that's the end of the time lapse. I'm now going to go into a live segment where I can showcase everything kind of in slow motion. Well, in I guess it seems slow, but in normal speed, I guess. So, uh, well, enjoy the live segment. Hey guys, welcome to the live segment. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the time lapse. Um, I'd like to show you guys around in uh, normal speed so you can see how things work 
at like a, a more granular level, I guess. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you guys is this uh, this little dropper thing, which you probably couldn't see very much during the time lapse because of the camera angles that I had. Uh, basically, all it's doing is it's depositing iron on this side, and then uh, and then it's going back over here and depositing iron on this side, just like that. So deposit, 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 and it'll come over here and deposit, deposit, deposit. Uh, the iron will come down on its respective side. If it's on this side, it'll go down there, and if it's on this side, currently it'll go into a chest, but eventually this will actually be used. Uh, so the left side here is the iron that is for iron only assemblers, and the right side is the iron that's used for iron uh, plus other stuff assemblers. So we will eventually move that down. Uh, actually, you know what? This is confusing me a little bit. Let me real quick color this to yellow. Okay, all fixed. There we go. Uh, they were both red for some reason, but uh, but no, that's the yellow one. So yeah, iron will go down here or something, and it'll be used by all these other refineries that have made other materials that could be used uh, with iron. Okay, then if the iron comes down this way, which is going to be going towards the iron-only assemblers, it goes into this little dropper right here. So it, it, it basically piles in, and then this dropper drops it onto the belt. The dropper goes back to, gra uh, to gather more iron, and it basically keeps doing that over and over. Now, I did say in the time-lapse that I might change this setup because it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like... I don't really need this dropper, and it kind of hinders the use of, uh, of this right here. I'd rather have a continuous flow of iron coming onto the belt. I think that would uh, make life a whole lot easier, especially since we use like a coin dropper thing, uh, a coin dropper system over here. So the more coins, I guess, the better the coin dropper would work. So uh, it would be nice to remove this and replace it with some sort of more efficient design uh, where the iron will pretty much continuously be getting onto the belt. Uh, but anyways, some of the iron gets on the belt, some of it falls off, which is another reason I might want to re uh, replace it, because some of the iron uh, like completely goes over the, the belt. But um, but anyways, it goes on the belt, and very slowly, it makes its way up to the coin pusher. Um, and finally, it gets down here, it drops onto uh, this thing, or sometimes this is back. Is this not moving? Alright, there we go, I fixed it. Um, okay, so the coin pusher, or the iron pusher, I guess it would be uh, better named. Uh, basically, the iron falls down and it gets pushed into these assemblers right here by this machine, which uh, which which his sole job is to push things. Now, again, this, this, uh, this design isn't terribly efficient. Um, the problem it has is that the, uh, the first two assemblers here, uh, one and two left and right over here, get a lot of iron, and then the next two get a little bit, and then the last two over there, the third two, uh, don't actually get that much iron. So it probably could do with being more efficient. Uh, so maybe I tweak this uh, next time, perhaps. Um, I'll even show you. So we have the assembler right here. It's producing a lot of steel plates, but then this one right here currently has produced no small steel tubes, and this one right here has produced no large steel tubes. And if we go to the other side, this one right here has produced a bunch of interior plates. And we've got a couple of construction, well, a bunch of construction components, and then girder. Hmm. Okay, it does actually seem like this side is uh, performing much better than the other side. So again, another reason I might need to tweak it. But for now, uh, at least some of the materials work, and it's kind of a proof of concept. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you guys about this uh, this new new stuff we built is the um, the car or, or the truck, the cargo. The cargo system. So essentially what this is, is we need a way to get all of the assembled materials that we get. Uh, we need to bring them to another location where they will be used in like a, a welding pit or something like that. So that is what this is for. Again, this is kind of just a proof of concept. It doesn't actually work. I mean, I suppose it probably would work if I turned it on uh, because we have a collector right there and it would collect into these things right here. Um, but I'd need to set up timer blocks and I'd need to somehow automate this. So the idea for this is we'd have an automated car. It'd come here, it'd gather all materials, then we'd hop in, or we, I mean, we wouldn't hop in, it'd be automated, but it would drive off, it'd go to wherever the heck it needs to go, and it would stop right there. It would deposit its materials, beep, 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 cool. Then it would drive back to the, uh, to the original place it was to collect more materials over and over and over, and that would be the sole duty of this thing. And if I can manage to get this to work, then it would be amazing to have a bunch of these all around the factory. It would look so cool to have trucks just moving around, I think. So yeah, that's that's the design for that. But again, I don't really know how we're going to do it. If any of you guys have uh, potential design ideas or ideas to have this thing automatically move around, then uh, please post those in the comments because um, those will be good to see. Uh, my current idea is just like a track. So we'd have a track like this set up and it would kind of guide it. So if we wanted to turn, the track would turn and it would, it would guide it like that. But I, that might be really difficult to pull off, so uh, yeah, any help is appreciated with that one. Um, oh wait, there's actually one more thing that I want to show you guys, because some of you guys have been wanting to see how these timer blocks work. 
Um, so this timer block here controls the uh, this thing right here, the dropper, and also the um, this dropper right here. So it controls both of those. Uh, so yeah, bunch of timer blocks. Um, I've got them listed A, B, B, C, D. Uh, the reason I have like that is because A uh, activates B and B at the same time, and B and B activate C and D. So it's uh, that's how it's set up. There's an order of operations right here, which you can read if you would like. Uh, pause the video and read that if you would uh, if you'd like to see how it works. And then I have starting instructions as well, just just in case everything fails and I need to, and I need to start it again. Uh, okay, so that is pretty much everything. Oh, the timer block for this one over here is just forward and backward. Yeah, so it's not that much. But um, but yeah, that's everything. I hope you guys liked uh, liked the video. I hope you guys like this design right here. This is the star of the sh of the of the episode for sure. The other things are just kind of peripherals. But I'm surprised we actually got one of these things to work. Um, I was not thinking it would work as well as it does. And obviously there are some needs for improvements, uh, especially around these wheels because it's not very smooth. But um, but you know what? It works. It works as intended, and that's all that matters, right? All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this video. If you did. Please leave a like and a comment down below, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Space Factory.